Well, Casey here with CL Creative, where I'm teaching you Webflow and web design one video at a time here on YouTube. And today we're going to talk about classes. We're going to talk about what classes are, why we should use classes, how we can use classes, and we're going to talk about some ways in which Webflow might trip us up a little bit when it comes to uh, how they name elements for us automatically and why we need to make sure that we do not allow that to happen when we are developing our projects. Let's jump into the computer and let's get started. All right, well, here we are in the computer, and this is a website that I built for a leadership foundation. And one of the things that we need to talk about first before we get into anything is what exactly is a class. I'm not assuming anything here, so let's define that. A class is simply you know, a name that is given to an HTML element that allows us to select that HTML element and apply some CSS styles to that. Left sidebar here is our navigator. These are all of our HTML elements as well as the names that have been applied or the classes that have been applied to those elements. And on the right here is our CSS panel. And up top here is where we actually apply and select, uh, apply the names to the elements and select those elements with e those names by you know, searching them up here in the style panel. So let me show you the power of doing that. If I was just to put another div block on the page and I took and I gave it the same exact name as section as this as this top one, section home header, watch what happens. If you notice, all of the different styles, have been applied to this div block. It has a background image. Uh, it has a gradient that's been applied to it. It's same display properties, same direct. Everything is exactly the same, a height of 100 VH. And so all of those are associated with that particular name, which then is really comes to, you know, why do we use these styles? Well, or why do we use classes? Well, it allows us to build much faster, which is saving us time, as well as it allows us to be consistent with our builds. So let me show you what I mean here. Now, I use FinSuite's Client First system, and that's what's going to be reflected on this website. One of the things that you're going to notice is I have section. Uh, I have section here, home header. These are just, This is a naming convention. But the next thing that I really want to bring your attention to here is page global. There's page global here, container large, container large here, padding section, extra large, padding section, extra large. Now, these are the spacing styles that are going to be applied to almost every single section on, on the website. And what that allows us to do is if you look in page global, really page global, the only styles that are applied to page global are padding. So two and a half rim on the left and two and a half rim on the right. What that allows me to do is really to maintain consistency throughout the website. So if I have this same div applied and, and put within every single section on the website, well, all of a sudden, every single section as you scroll down is going to have the exact same amount of padding between this HTML element here and the side of the page and you can you can see that here it makes things very nice very consistent but it also makes the build go very very fast i'm not fiddling with well this is one pixel off here then that section over there because i didn't type something in right i've applied this class once in the style guide and i'm reusing it over and over and over again it also allows for easy updates and so say my client comes to me and they say you know i really like I really like what you've done, but one of the things that I don't like is that there's not enough space in between each of these sections. Well, I have a class for that, and so all I have to do is go in and say I want to add more space, so I can go in and apply 8 rim on the top and 8 rim on the bottom, and if you notice that every single one of these sections that have that same class applied to it, which is all of these sections on this page, have changed so that there's 8 rim and 8 rim throughout. So if I go back and I, you know, change that back, then 
all of the different sections on the page are going to change back to reflect that same exact spacing that is taking place on the page. The other thing that we need to talk about when it comes to classes is naming our classes in an organized way. If you notice, I have section home header, section home company logo, section home vision. Now, the reason that I have named things like that is well, I know that this is a section. I know that this is on the home page. I know that this is the header. You don't even have to look at the page to really understand what is going on when it comes to your website. It, there's an organization that is there. There are sections. There's page global. There's containers. There are components that are all the building blocks of that particular website, as well as these are descriptive. So you know this is the home header. You know that this is the company logo section. You know that this is the vision section. There is no denying that. Or when we get down to smaller elements on the page, you know that, that if I apply this class to this div block, what it's going to do is it's going to align the text to the center. The same thing here, if I apply heading style H2, well, it's going to give it the heading style H2. If I apply this other class, text size large, text weight bold, text color white, we know exactly what those classes are going to do. So not only does it help us save time, maintain consistency, and for us to be organized, but it also if we give them descriptive names, then it becomes very usable. Now, one of the things that I do want to talk about before we end today is what does Webflow do that would really trip us up? Now, Webflow is certainly trying to be helpful, but let me just show you. Now, say I want to style this particular image, and so I come in and I give it 100% width. Oh, Webflow goes ahead, anything that you style, you any element you put on the page and then you put a style to it, they're going to name that element for you. Essentially, if you never named anything, you would end up with like div block 1000 and image 2000 and text block 57 or you know 150, however big your project was and however much styling that you applied to these different things. None of that stuff is helpful at all. And so we need to be aware that if we're going to put any sort of style on an element, we need to name it or Webflow is going to name it for us. So don't let Webflow name your classes for you. Name them on your own. All right, well, hopefully you got some value out of this video today as we learned what classes are, how we should use them, why we should use them, why they're super important, how they're going to help you become a better developer, and thinking about classes and using them in a more consistent way will help to speed up your development process. If you got some value out of this video, would you smash that like button? If you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you have some topic that you want me to cover, leave it down in the comments. I will be happy to try to make a video to answer any questions that you have. Well, I hope to see you on the next video.